weekend, a Fort Worth police officer shot and killed a Tatiana Jefferson inside her own home. The officer was responding to a concerned neighbor's call, but while checking the house, he never identified himself as a police officer. State Representative Nicole Collier from Fort Worth is in studio. She is calling for more intensive training of police officers all across the state. As always, joining in on the questioning is Bud Kennedy from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Uh, good morning, Representative Collier. Thanks for being with us today. Good morning, Jason. Nicole. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, so let's talk about uh, you know, what you're calling for here because we've heard a lot of calls for action uh, following this shooting death of a Tatiana Jefferson. You're saying that we need more intensive police training across the state. What do you mean by that specifically? Okay, so besides training, we need to go back before that. Uh, let's take a step and see who qualifies in the first place to mm. serve in law enforcement. That's where another place we need to focus our attention on. Yes, we have training, and if you recall the Sandra Bland Act mm. from uh, the 2017 legislature, SB 1849, that was spearheaded by Representative Garnett Coleman out of Houston, mm. there were uh, provisions in that bill that address some de-escalation techniques that need to have uh, be included in the training. Mm. Yes, we got that. However, there were some other terms in that bill that were wiped out due to pushback from two major law enforcement groups. Mm. So these are the, uh, one of the provisions that was uh, scrapped from that bill dealt with implicit biases. Mm. And it would require law enforcement to have training in terms of identifying and learning how to identify implicit bias. The other provision that was stripped dealt with racial profiling, mm. meaning that the individual and for officer, uh, if, there's, if you identify an officer that has been found to have con, uh, engaged in racial profiling, they would be required to go un, uh, undergo counseling and training. And these provisions were the ones that were pushed back by those two law enforcement uh, entities because they felt like it was coming from, that those provisions were coming from a uh, uh, um, from a, um, you know somewhere from distrust of law, law enforcement. So does this case then uh, give new life to those provisions? I think so. In fact, we had bills this last session that would have addressed some of these issues that would have brought those uh, provisions back. But again, we got pushback. So this is why it's important that the community gets involved and vote for people who are not afraid to take a stand in spite of what uh, big you know lobby is doing. Nicole, the, the, uh, there may be some viewers out there this morning who are saying, well, just a few years ago, the Fort Worth police went into an old white man's home in Woodhaven and shot him and may have lied about whether he had a gun or not. Mm. Is this really a racial issue? And Talk about the bias you see. You're talking about Mr. Waller. Mr. Yes. Waller lived in my, in my community. This is where I live. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Waller, uh, and this is still part of an ongoing uh, legal battle. Uh, Mr. Waller was in his own home and he was also shot by a law enforcement officer who, who was at the wrong house. Who went to the wrong address. That's mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. who had gone to the wrong address and the officer shot and killed this, this elderly man. And so these are uh, issues that we need to address. Now I would, I would like to think, I would like to say that I think that the cultural aspect of where these uh, incidents happened, Woodhaven, and where this happened in the south side of Fort Worth, has something to do with it. So when we're talking about biases, uh, let's talk about where you are going. You know, if you're going to an area that has a higher crime rate, are you more concerned or fearful for your life? You know, these are things that we need to look at, and that can go back to actually qualifying for being in law enforcement. And this is where place. that more intensive training that you're talking about comes in, but how much of it is the training itself and how much of it is the individual uptake uh, from uh, officers? Because we saw in the Amber Geiger murder trial in Dallas, uh, they were asking her, you know, just months before you shot Botham Jean, you took all of this training and she didn't recall it, or at least that's what she said on the witness stand. Well, I mean, that's a problem. But the thing is, is that, you know, the officers have quite a bit of uh, training that they have to go through. However, it's every, every two years, 40 hours every two years. But let's talk about how they get there. You know, who is in that seat as being in a law uh, enforcement officer? Do they qualify? What did that psychological exam uncover? Is it enough? You know, we need to do a deep dive. Representative Terry Canales had a bill that would require T. Cole to review all of the, uh, all of the uh, commission standards and, and training techniques to make sure that they're relevant and up to date and fit for that community. 
because you know TCOL, the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, they only have uh, you know a set number of requirements, but then each department can come up with other mm. additional requirements as well. Madam Chairman, how do you feel about the Fort Worth Police response to this particular case? There are obviously a lot of calls for a review board for new oversight. You know, where do you fall on that? How do you feel? And you know, I don't have a opposition to a, a review, um, you know, a oversight uh, board because my thinking is next session I need to file a bill that would require one. Mm. When you have so many ty uh, officer involved shootings, mm. we did get a bill from current Mayor Eric Johnson mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Senator Royce West uh, a, a session ago that required reporting officer involved shootings. Now we know the numbers. The numbers are high. One is too many when you have an uh, unarmed individual or any individual who's in their home minding their own business being shot and killed. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at these numbers, take those numbers and see, compare that to when we need to institute a, a police oversight board. All right, uh, we'll have to leave it there. Representative Collier, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you.